my uh, parents or, you know, point is I didn't buy them with my own money because back then I didn't have a, I didn't have a source of income. No child does. Well, unless they're incredibly rich. So, uh, we just get our books and things for like one for each subject, keep in mind. So they were, they had to be like very expensive. I just, I just, for the entirety of my, for the entirety of elementary school, I just went to a private school. So if you, if you, you viewer, in, you know, who has schooled, did, did school, or is in school in the Philippines right now, but you're in a public school, like, uh, I have no idea what to say. Uh, I'm just so, I'm just so unprepared, even for talking at a rectangle. Either be the rectangle, be the piece of paper in front of me, which has nothing, which is unhelpful, or this this iPad, which is recording thing. So, uh, actually, let's just skip to it. Let's just skip to like the activity part. We do an activity in the book, like a uh, page three hundred. 56 and then we do that in that class and then the homework would be page 358 or like an activity a few pages away but as long as it's the next one and then they might check it I guess they might check it or if it was on like a different piece of paper like this one's just loosely with holes it has three holes in it but we just had pad paper or just notebooks. And we had little notebook things. Little notebooks with me. Well, I didn't own all the notebooks. I had like one notebook for each subject. And one one textbook. Or just book. For each subject. And then we would do like a quiz on that notebook. Or copy things down that are blatantly from the book. Which the teacher could have told us to copy but they just wrote it on the chalkboard anyway but then again the point is like uh the point is the entire point of the philippine part of my explanation filipino part of my explanation is that you know the t if you do if you do the homework you do the activity teacher checks it i feel validated because they have a positive response and they check it and then i have a good grade but, and then I do the homework. I do the homework, pass it in, and then, like, submit it. I do the homework, pass it in. The teacher checks it, gives it back to us, and has a good grade, which is basically, or in a way, the teacher saying, wow, you did a great job on this, without, minus the sarcastic comment. So, I, but here, here in my Canadian experience, I... Like if you're still watching, uh, thanks. I guess I'm so I'm sorry. It's I'm sorry that I'm unprepared. Like that that's my fault. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm sorry. It's just it's just my fault. Like hilariously, it's my fault for not preparing notes. I wanted to talk about my pro unproductivity, unproduct, unproduct, unproductivity. But anyway, in the Canadian experience for the past past three past three years like it was like a do teacher hands in not that gives everyone sheet of paper with activity on it that's step one that's step one and then the teacher talks about it and things and how do you answer it and that's step two and then we answer it in terms of free time or something it's not free time because we're answering it but uh like it's just time without the teacher talking and telling us what to do with the sheet we're just uh we're just answering it at this point so that's step three or whatever number i think i forgot but i think it's three and then and then by the end of the class we just put it in our binders then go to the next one and where the process would continue unless if it were another subject where you didn't have to sit down and listen or without the sitting down part explicitly so uh Back to the bin, we're not talking about the anatomy of a bin, but more on the physical feeling of putting a piece of paper 
with writing. You're putting it in the bin, and that's done. That's done until he gives it back to you. Like, uh, I'm talking about the Canadian experience now. So, uh... So, I feel very validated by positive response. But sometimes... The, not always, but I think... Yeah, at this point... I... Yeah, at this point... It's just... It's just... This is good, but I, but I want to do more. Like, to see what I mean... To see what I mean... The teacher I'm talking about, like, uh, no shade, no shade to you, teacher I'm talking about, but, uh, I'm just describing. So, uh, the teacher I'm talking about is grade things from one to four. It's, it goes from one, is there a one plus? Yeah, it goes from one to flo floor, four, one to four. It goes one, then one plus, I think. I don't know if there's a one plus. One, one plus, two, two plus, three, three plus, four. So it's just those things, and then the other teach another teacher goes does it from one to eight without the pluses this time, but only the pluses are on the eight. And it's it's just confusing dealing with two different grading systems, but uh, the way that our report cards are calculated are the same anyway. So it's just it's just a matter of positioning one system into another. But anyway, one teach. One teacher, the one I'm talking about right now, does it from one to four with pluses, and then the other one does it from. Okay, okay, just to eliminate confusion, I'm just gonna say English teacher and math teacher, because they teach other subjects too. But uh, I'm just gonna, just gonna, whoops, sorry about that. Just gonna refer to them as English teacher and math teacher. Like a, if you're. If Either of you are watching. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not ridiculing you in any way. I'm just describing what you two do. So uh, anyway, English teacher does it from one to four, with pluses. I don't know if the one has a plus, but it's pluses. And then the math teacher, math teacher just uh, does it from one to eight, without pluses, except the eight has a plus two, has has a plus as well. Not two pluses, just as well. And, uh, it's not that confusing because, uh, what well, in one thing, the subjects that they teach, aside from math or aside from English, those English teacher teaches us, like our class, three, three subjects, three separate subjects, while math teacher does two, math being one of them, and then English teacher does English blank and blank, which I'll just, uh, talk about another time. So anyway, it's the air, no wait, the feeling, the vibe, or the general environment of either class is generally distinct, if you know what I mean. Like a English, for me, for me at least, has this feel of, hooray, what are we going to do now? Minus the sarcastic comment. Minus the sarcastic tone, rather. And then math is like, oh... Time to relearn what I've already learned in the past three, four, five years that I've been reviewing. But in general, it's just really both teachers, uh, both teachers, even though they grade things differently with the four and eight system, it's just... Well, this, this is the consequence of me being unprepared for talking to a rectangle. It's just me with without any guides. I should, I should probably prepare what I'm going to talk about next time. This is probably over, over an hour of footage already. I should... This is probably over an hour of footage anyway. So, uh... They just grade things differently. So, uh... The vibe I've already said is different, but uh, in with English teacher in particular, like let's let's temporarily forget about the math teacher, my math teacher. Just gonna go back to English teacher. It feels like in the activities of all three subjects, it feels like all three subjects are just one 
one class because a we're in the same same classroom and the way he talks about it isn't really that different or distinct and uh, uh it just feels like the sh the layout of the sheets that he gives us is generally the same but the majority of the activities they're in they're in they're for the english subject like well of course all the activities would be in english in my area of canada but you know i'm in i'm in it right now so uh yeah so uh t why do i keep going off track is it because of help can unprepared i am i keep saying that it's just me venting now to a rectangle so come on so i've already said the how samey they are the way he talks about it it's basically the same not basically but it's it feels the same it's in the same way it's kind of like boring in a way like the topics yeah they're not really boring but in the way that it was presented and things yeah they're it's kind of kind of boring like a, you won't even realize if it were english english subject or english class or i'm just gonna say the other two health two classes healthy living which is basically right now healthy living is basically how to maintain a relationship whether it be a friendship or just romantic relationship and citizenship education we just call it i just call it citizen when i'm talking about it with people but uh yeah english healthy living and the citizenship education what words are really long words are normally really long and i'll get to that in a bit long words with me but he teaches those three subjects like the concept of them might be a little unusual but uh in general yeah that's what they are i'm just gonna uh yeah i'm just so infuriated myself for not preparing again so t you probably clicked off by now so uh, t though you wouldn't even realize if it were healthy living english or citizen if you really analyze what you're doing like oh i'm just doing adjectives and things i must be in english and oh i'm we're talking about inaction and altruism in a in citizenship in citizen and then in the healthy living we're talking about what makes a toxic friend what makes a good friend or something yeah i'm not, I'm not saying these are bad subjects i'm just saying like like you can you can really tell them apart unless you really noticed it like uh like uh uh okay like uh you knew what you were doing wow what a blunt thing to say to a rectangle unless unless he says oh we're in healthy living rooms the point is i keep saying the point is i keep saying the point is to summarize things so the point is you couldn't really tell they just muddled together anyway they're mud the those three subjects they're muddled they're muddled together and you think it's the same subject with mr english teacher so uh so for even for even for one of the activities i'm just going to i'm just going to say one i'm just going to cut to the chase and talk about one specific activity for the example and then that will come in full circle with my feelings of unproductivity so uh or being unproductive so uh, there was this one there's this one activity with the so we were presented a short story called lamb to the slaughter what whatever lamb to the slaughter what's the author's name like i don't know it was a pd when i looked it up it was a pdf file but anyway wait no i didn't look that one up i looked i'm Okay, the point is, let's get back on track. Let's back on track. The point is, it was a short story about this woman in 
the night we theorized hypothesized that it was in the in the 50s 1950s that she's like this stereotypical female um i was about to say husband but no a female wife that conforms like like I, i'm not I'm not being. I'm trying not to be rude here. I'm try. I'm just describing what gender norms were back in the nineteen nineteen fifties. But the point is, it was just like it was just that stay home, takes care of kids. You know, I I I suck at gender norms. I I I suck at describing them. But uh, in general, she was just the stay home, takes care of kids, looks at kids, cooks things. Etc. And then the and then the husband the husband comes home from a long day of work, and then he drinks some gin thing. And then, and then Paul was just, just look Mary just oh wait the husband's name is just Paul wait yeah Paul Paul Peter Paul is it Paul or Peter I don't know I think it's probably Paul, but uh. Yeah, if you're, if you, you the viewer, actually, Nick and Paul, I'm not talking about you, I'm just, <sighs> so, Paul, Paul just comes back, and tells the wife, go marry, and, she's like, her surname is like, Maloney, like, haha, it rhymes with Maloney, but seriously, her surname is like, Mary Maloney, that's, like, it's not spelled in the same way that Baloney is spelled, but it's basically, phonetically, in terms of English standards. But anyway, Paul just says to Mary, just, here, let's, we should talk about this thing. And, so, and then the the author just, like, and then he talked for, like, five minutes, and then Mary just, oh my, and then Mary just is shocked. What he has to say, like, there was an entire... An entire question of the activity we were given was base, was basically, what do you think they talked about? Like I just did my answers a complete joke like, like the classic up dog the up uh, the classic up dog, hook thing. But with with the word stigma instead of up dog. What is an up dog you ask? Not much, you. So, uh, wow, I, that, the execute, the execution of that, wow, that is, yeah, it's gonna be cemented in this video. That's great. I didn't, I didn't plan on that, but, wow, I sound so cheesy. But anyway, I sounded so cheesy. Anyway, and then uh, Mary just goes automatically... Enraged, like silently enraged, but automatically goes down to the cellar, gets like a leg of lamb, and then just smacks Paul in the head with it, so much so that he dies on the spot. So that that was fun to read, to a bunch of teenagers. So. Anyway, she died. No, not he. He he dies, but not Mary. Paul just dies, and then Mary's like, "Oh no, what have I? How, what have I done?" It's kind of like post nut clarity, but but uh, instead of nothing, it's instead of nothing. It's just like doing a really bad thing, like you know, killing your husband, but you know. It's like, oh no, what have I done? So now she just uh she just goes up to the upstairs room and goes up to the upstairs room, prepares to go to the grocer, grocery, grocery, grocery. However it is pronounced, it's a store. Then she rehearses like, Oh no, how's it how's it going, Sam? Like I, I don't even have the story here. It's in my binder somewhere. But anyway, it's just, uh, it's just, she's rehearsing, she do, just wants to feel, seem calm, but she, she does it anyway. So she goes to that store, in that story, and the grocer, or the cashier, was like, hell, hell, hello, like, 
Hello with an U and not with an E. H Hello, Mary. Like, that would be a bit unusual, but sure. But, hello, hello, Mary. And then she just orders her fruit and vegetable from him as if nothing happened. As if a tragic death didn't happen a few paragraphs before. And then she just goes home with it. With the gross groceries, groceries, and then she calls the cops. And she calls the cops on who? No one. She just says, "Oh no, cops! Oh, my my husband is dead. He's on the floor, passed out, and he's even bleeding." Like, the point is, she calls it. She calls the cops. So anyway, cops come with a detective, and then they just scout the scout the evidence. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention she put the leg of lamb. You you remember the leg of lamb? She beat her husband with. What? Oh my god, that sounded that sounded so wrong. Like me saying that, it sounded so wrong. But you know, anyway, she she hit her husband with it. Then she just puts it in the oven for dinner. And then it's just like, oh oh no, cops like uh, like you know. My husband's dead. But the point is, she she put it in there because she was cooking for dinner. That's basically the evidence loss. And that's what you want if you're just a complete psychopath. Burden. Burden, you know. So, uh... Yeah, that. So, uh... The cops were like, oh, oh this could have... A giant club thing... Could have struck, stricken, stricken, striked his head. He gets rushed to the hospital. I think I'm getting this story wrong, but basically, but basically, she's just like, oh, fake, faking it. But uh, the cops don't know that, so, like, oh no, my husband's dead. Whatever shall I do? So, t it's then. Then she's. Then she just. Uh, then she just goes to the kitchen, prepares the leg of lamb, and then just gives it to the cops and that one detective and said, "Oh, oh go ahead, eat all of it. I, I don't, I have enough for myself, so just eat all of it." And but in her mind, she was thinking that, "Oh wow, that's the evidence, evidence gone, he he he." So, and then we're just. We're left at the... That's the end of the story, basically. That that was a very, very bad retelling. Because I can't really remember. It was just a few months ago we read it. But we did... We, we did questions on that story. And then... I went all out. There were just ten questions. And there, there were just... Uh, were they ten? And Were they ten questions? I think there were around ten. But there were ten pages. Of size twelve... Single spacing mono space font, and then I put the little quote like quotes from the story. Oh, oh yeah, here's where the here's where the good stuff starts. So basically, over the past few months, I've been in this grade. Uh, in in school. There's now basically kind of like a certain formula you had to fulfill. Like, he never mentions it explicitly. But it's just like, a, like, a, what is the answer? Like, the simplest answer. The simplest answer is technically a three if you go back to the greeting system I talked about. This is, like, he shows, like, what is a, what is this answer? On a, on a slideshow presentation thing. And then he says, uh, this could... And then he asked people, what would this be? And then people say, like, oh, it's a two plus, maybe? A three? A three plus? And he just comes out, like, saying, yeah, it's a three. So now he asks, how can I make this answer better? And, like, I'm just exaggerating his voice because, uh... Because, uh... It feels very forced and things. So, uh... And then people just point out, like, oh, you could have... You could make a connection, which... Yeah, he says connection. You can make a connection. And what question didn't he answer? Even if he just basically answered the question. So, and then he says, yeah, that could be, that's a four. 
I, is there a four? Yeah, there is a four plus. But he just says four in general. So now I exploit, kinda. I exploit the structure. And here's where the really good stuff starts. I overcomplicate my answer. Just so much so, I doubt he even read it. So now I put in put in some like ridiculous copy pasta in the in the middle of it, like around page five, just just so like as a little reminder, a little subtle reminder as of like, hey, are you actually reading this? If so, tell me about this thing I put in the next morning or whenever you give this give this back to me. So uh so it was ten pages of around three thousand words or something like for me, three thousand words is an achievement, but I've s I have haven't seen people write more than three hundred not three hundred, three thousand. But uh I'm sure there are people out there who who've written more words than I have. Like especially people who write books. Like those are definitely more than three thousand words. So anyway, I put it, I, I pass it in, pass it in, and I think I put it in the bin? I think I put it in the bin. But I also had a paper copy to put in the bin, and then I put it in Google Classroom, just to be safe. So now, you now have 10 pages of 3,000 words of, of the answers, but they kind of don't make sense in a way. Like, I repeat myself, I, I use long words, those long long words like like i over complicate the structure and just enough so that you could barely understand like you it would be on the border between comprehensive and totally ununderstand eh, un understandable standable but not understandable uncomprehensive so it would be balancing over that line and i put like oh here's a bonus observation or here's that chart you wrote down on the board, and I, I observe that little, I observe that thing to the ground, I mean to the paper because, or just the file because I'm typing it, and it's a monospace font. But anyway, I got a four for it, you know, four plus maybe I think I got a four plus on it. Yeah, I got a four four plus on it, and then he says, "Wow, I think you you worked really hard on it," and then he and then. And then I just notice his forced smile. Like no joke, it feels like it feels like he's trying his hardest to smile and seem sincere, but I feel like he's he secretly isn't. So uh basically uh I ask him, "Did you read all of it?" and he said, "Yep." And then uh I asked, "Are you sure?" Like did I ask are you sure? I think I did. Maybe not explicitly, but I think I Asked, are you sure? Like, uh, he said, yeah. I read through it. With a jaded voice. It, feel, it felt like, felt like he wasn't, he wasn't sincere, yeah. But I feel like, I now have the thought that this guy didn't actually read, read all of it. He didn't read all of it. That, therefore, my work is useless. It's just it's just filler things. I think he just if he sees it's long, it's long and I get a four or a three plus. Or if it was just a piece of paper where I barely tried, it would be like a three, three or a two plus. But I think I've only gotten a two plus once and the rest of the not hard work ones were threes. And then the things I've worked hard on Force, but the point is, I feel like my work isn't valued, and this is where we go back to the topic of my own productivity. I feel like exploiting my own work is just one, it's just wrong at this point, but it feels like I have no choice to do it, but to do it. But anyway, it's just it's just like I'm just being unmotivated. That's that's another thing. I'm being unmotivated. I don't have the motivation to do anything. Therefore, I don't feel productive. And then when I don't feel productive, I don't have the motivation. And then it just cycles, cycles, and cycles. And does it again and again and again. Until I realize 
I haven't actually done anything. So now I'm here with five, five things I'm behind on. But there aren't really that, they aren't really that important per se. But uh, they should have been done. Like, I haven't done it. Honestly, I haven't done it because of my unmotivation. But that was in part to the unproductivity, which cycled before that. And now I'm just in, I was in that loop. And then by the end of the, by the end of, when did we get dismissed? Like before, but before winter break, we were just, uh, I feel like everyone, everyone, but not everyone, but everyone basically has finished this work thing. And that, and yeah, that's, that could apply for all things, all things I have to do, like hobbies, like conlangs I want to make, like I have, I have base, I, in, in theory, I have like five ideas for conlangs, but, but for now I just have like none, I haven't finished any, I've had ideas, but I haven't finished any of them, like, oh yeah, I might post, put conlanging things here on this channel if I I eventually make one so uh, yeah I think I think that'll be it that's why I don't feel productive my feelings of unproductivity are cycled by the fact that I don't have motivation to do anything and that uh and his uh, crazy requirements but but I don't think he's asking for much really he's just subliminally subliminally asking for hey you should write more he never explicitly says it. He never says it to me straight up. But I feel like he wants more out of me. But uh, if you're like a, a person in my class, you'd think, oh no, that must be ridiculous. Well, of course it is. It is ridiculous. But I'm just a supplement. My unmotivation is being supplemented. So uh, I'm motivated to do more. But I feel like my work is not valued. And then... It, unproductivity happens the motivation product unmo unmotivation unproductivity the cycle continues until today where i until the start of my planning stages that i mentioned way early in this video phase zero is starting phase zero is starting step zero is starting january 6th 7th 8th 9th 10th that's it monday monday through friday i'll just do as much as i can categorize all the new things into their into their specific like old things that I haven't done and new things I haven't done and then I have I'm gonna plan myself to read like a book like for phase one or just phase zero because I can I, because I can because I can read a book in less than a week like recording an audiobook must be like under eight hours or something I don't know I'm just estimating but yeah, I'm going to start with this pl these planning stages by the by the end of phase 0. I'll probably fill you in with a progress report on how that's doing. So uh yeah, I'll just end it here. I'll edit all all the footage all the footage into, you know, iMovie or something because that's all I have right now. So uh this is probably pretty long. It's more probably more than an hour long. I've been talking for more than an hour. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I should probably prepare speaking notes for myself. But anyway, that's that's basically the end. I'll just uh, see you in next week. I'll, this is just my this is just my take on having consistent uploads like every week. So I'll I'll just I'll just see you next week, I guess. Maybe to another piece of paper. I don't know. I don't know what next week will bring. It's just a basically a progress report. Of how I'm doing. But you know. I'll just. I'll see you then. Have a great day.